space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Equinox. It's five year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man's sky couldn't even touch because after all the hype that went into this game, it ended up being a colossal galaxy sized disappointment. But everything that game tried to do, this game did it better. Knocked it out of the freaking universe. And today, I am so excited to talk about Starlink Battle for Atlantis. Usually, before I make a video about a video game, I like to jot down a few dot points about said game. But there are more things that I want to talk about than there are stars in the sky. Hmm, so do I start with the fact that I think it's the best unofficial Star Fox game ever made? Or do I start with the fact that for the first time, I think we have a Switch game that launched on all platforms and it's actually better on the Switch than anywhere else. This is honestly the first time I felt this way. Or maybe I should start with the fact that I have an addiction to this game. And I don't just mean the fact that for the last three nights I've stayed up until six in the morning playing at handheld mode in my bed even though I know I have to get up and do stuff in a couple hours. I also mean that I'm addicted to buying the toys that go along with the game. I only have a few things left to get and I'd like to say that I'm not gonna get them, but we all know it's me. Let me tell you why I love No Man's Skylanders as much as I do. Being the giant man-child that I am, growing up with video games and toys as a kid, I have always loved the concept of toys that interact with my video games. As soon as I saw things like Skylanders and LEGO Dimensions being released in stores, I really wished that I was a kid again so I could convince my mum and dad to go out and buy these toys and I could experience playing video games in this way. But as much of a giant man-child that I am, those games never appealed to me. I tried playing Skylanders when it first came out, but it just wasn't for me. The game was a little bit too simple, and I didn't like that you had to keep going out and buying new characters to access areas in the game that I'm literally standing in front of. The door is right there. I don't want to have to go down to the shops to get Fire Guy so that I can open the fire door. But then as soon as I saw Starlink revealed at the last E3, it immediately captured my attention. For quite a few reasons, the first one being I really wanted No Man's Sky to be good and it just wasn't. And here I am looking at Starlink and it looks a lot like No Man's Sky, but it's made by Ubisoft. And for those that have been following my channel for a while, I am quite a big fan of Ubisoft games. I enjoy me some Assassin's Creed, I enjoy me some Far Cry, and I just love the relationship that they have always had with Nintendo throughout the years, supporting all of their systems where other developers wouldn't. Which of course goes hand in hand with Star Fox being in Starlink. Now, I have always liked Star Fox games. I've never been the biggest Star Fox fan, and I personally was let down by Star Fox Zero. I know there's a huge split between the fans on whether they enjoyed that game or they didn't enjoy it, but I was one of those that could not stand the controls, and it completely ruined the game for me. Not saying it was a bad game, just saying I couldn't get my head around it. So as soon as I imagined a No Man's Sky style game, but done correctly by Ubisoft with Star Fox in it. Oh, I was excited. I was very, very excited. And then, just to make all of my dreams come true, I was finally presented with a Skylanders type gimmick that I could actually get on board with, literally. Spaceships, cool characters, and weapons that I can switch in and out whenever I want. So you could say my hopes for the game were fairly high, but at the same time, I was really keeping them in check just because of previous experiences. And immediately, I fell in love with Star Fox Battle for Atlantis. And yes, I do mean Star Fox Battle for Atlantis because Star Fox is in the entire game. Not only did this game exceed all of my expectations as far as an actual good No Man's Sky starship dogfight battling killing things blowing things up with my lasers kind of game, it also shattered my expectations with what Star Fox being in the game actually meant. He is in the entire game. Throughout almost every cutscene, Star Fox and his gaggle of humanoid animal friends are present and have a role to play. You can use Star Fox as your play 
playable character right from the start and right through to the end of the game. He'll have dialogue to himself as well as with the rest of the Equinox crew. Any other characters or NPCs you meet in the game, he'll interact with them. He is just part of the game like he was always supposed to be there. And of course there are exclusive Star Fox missions on the Nintendo Switch version and they are actually fantastic. Of course they revolve around Wolf being the bad guy and the rest of the Star Fox crew trying to take him down, going planet to planet trying to find clues being in these awesome battles, trying to find out what Wolf is actually doing and where to find him so that you can battle him. So much more Star Fox content than I was expecting. And don't get me wrong, the game itself is still great. The game at its core, what the game actually is, and the characters they have in the game already, all of it is fantastic. They've done an amazing job at building the galaxy of Atlas and then filling it full with a rich story, fun characters, a ton of drama, so much stuff to do in the galaxy when you're flying around in space, and then so much to do when you land on the planets and explore the flora and fauna. So much is packed into this game. I'm surprised it even loads up on the Switch. I'm surprised they could even cram this thing onto the system, let alone have it run as well as it does. I have had no frame rate issues, it hasn't stuttered on me once, it's one of the smoothest Switch experiences I have had, and yet it's this huge grand scale game that was released on the same day on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and yes, it doesn't look as good as the other systems. Obviously on an Xbox One X on a 4K TV, this game is going to look incredible, and it's not going to look the same on the Switch. Looks and plays that good that I am surprised every time I boot up the game. But for those reasons, the fact that it looks and plays amazing on the Switch and the game at its core, at its base, is still a fantastic game even without Star Fox, that including Star Fox and having all these extra missions for the same price, being able to fly around in the R-Wing, it truly does, in my opinion, make the Switch version the best version to own. For me, this is the definitive version of Starlink, which means, again, for the first time, we have a game released on all three platforms that's actually better on Switch, and it released on the same day. It didn't get delayed, it didn't have to wait a year for it. Dark Souls came out today for the Switch. This released the same day with no bugs, no issues, running so well with Star Fox and exclusive missions. Please, Try and debate me on this. Change my mind. <laughs> and I know we talk about handheld a lot and how that is a main advantage of picking a game up on the Switch, but there's something really special about playing this game in handheld mode. For starters, it's gorgeous in handheld mode and it still runs just as well as docked. But I talked about how grand scale this game is and that's what makes it so amazing playing it handheld. It's making me fall in love with my Switch all over again, let alone the game itself. So really briefly, this is how the game works with the toys. And if you didn't know, you can play this game without the toys. You can buy everything digitally and it's actually a lot cheaper. And it's the first time I've seen this done with one of these games where they've had toys go along with it that you can also buy things digitally. Digitally. And that's a really nice idea to have these two options, but I do find it interesting because for starters, buying everything in a bundle digitally is way cheaper than going out and buying the toys. So giving your players a much cheaper option of buying digitally, I don't think that would bode too well for the toys. So assuming you're playing without toys, if you go and download the content, you just go into your loadout and just switch the parts out in game. Which is also what you do in handheld mode if you do have the toys, because when you're playing on the TV, obviously you plug it into this and you're playing on the Joy-Con but if you're playing in handheld, you don't have access to all of this. The Joy-Cons are on the Switch, so it just stores any of the toys that you've previously used while playing. While you're playing with the toys, you choose your pilot, and if you're like me, it's always Star Fox, but every pilot has different abilities, and then you choose the ship that you want to use. If you're following the game's story, then each pilot will have their own ship, but of course, you can use any ship with any pilot. And then the fun part really is using any gun with any ship. You get two guns in the base pack, a fire gun and an ice gun, and obviously you can go out and buy more guns from there. If you see an enemy that has a weakness to another gun that you have, you might want to switch to that one to make it a little easier. You can also switch the wings to any of your ships, which I haven't been doing because I think every combination I've tried has looked really silly, and I always would rather just fly my R wing. Although I do also really like this ship because it has a scrappy look to it and it does get me through some tough situations. Another reason I like this scrappy ship is because it has an orange light on the back that looks really cool. And honestly, to me, this is magic. I don't know how any of this works. Don't ask me. I have no idea. Somehow, it sends a signal down to the Joy-Cons, which puts it into the game. Somehow,
tell the Joy-Cons are powering lights on the ships and sometimes the guns. In fact, when you go into hyperdrive in space, which is cool on its own, these lights light up even brighter. Honestly, it's really easy to switch everything out while you're playing and I've never come across a circumstance where I've needed something that I didn't have. In my opinion, that's the best way to do something like this. You have a digital option, you can buy everything really cheap online if you want to, or you can go out and buy the toys, which let's be honest, they look really badass and cool. But at the end of the day, you could just buy the base pack, finish the entire game and have a good time with it. I thought that maybe having the ships on the controller like this would get really heavy and really cumbersome, but it's not. The, the R-Wing actually is really light. I think it's the lightest of all the ships. And initially when you put it on, you do feel that weight of, oh, my Joy-Cons just got like twice as heavy. But then 10 minutes into playing, you completely forget the things even sat there until you have to change something out. So the game itself does play like a fairly typical Ubisoft game. It follows the same Ubisoft tried and true formula that they've been doing for quite a few years now, but it actually feels fresh because I'm so new to this kind of game. We haven't really had many games like this other than No Man's Sky. So initially when you start playing, it's almost overwhelming because you have all this new stuff, all these new things that you can do that you haven't been able to do before, like flying between worlds, exploring planets, dog fights, building alliances. But after several hours of playing and once you settle into the game, if you have played Ubisoft games before and you're familiar with the structure of how they work, you start to see the similarities between Far Cry, between Assassin's Creed and between Starlink. And again, it's in no way a bad thing. It actually helped me familiarize myself with the game and its world a little easier, while at the same time, it felt really new, it felt really exciting. And the game splits up all the elements about it really well. You don't spend too much of your time doing any one thing. Of course, the game is very open and you can do what you want when you want to do it. But if you just follow along with the campaign and the story, you'll find yourself doing an equal amount of exploring on the planets, an equal amount of doing the side missions, an equal amount of being in space. The game is paced really well and has a nice flow throughout the entire experience. It just brings you in. Every time you finish something, you just want to do something else really quickly. And then you do that and then you have an idea that, oh, maybe I should go to that planet and do that thing really quickly. And it just snowballs for me and I become addicted and don't want to stop completing missions. Even if they're just little side stuff that's almost irrelevant to the story, I still want to do it. Which brings me to my final point. I said that in my opinion, it's the best Star Fox game that's ever been made. And I'm going to stand by that even though I know it's going to upset some people because it did in my live stream when I said it. But bear in mind, it's just my preference on what I look for in a video game. I enjoy Star Fox. Again, I've never loved it. I've always liked it. I don't like on-rail shooters. I never have. And the best Star Fox games were on-rail shooters. Star Fox Zero did have a little bit more freedom to it. But again, I just couldn't get my head around the control controls and I always felt like I was fighting a shopping cart with a broken wheel. And for me, I look at something like Star Fox going into 2018 and becoming more. Like with Zelda Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is nothing like what previous Zeldas were like. They shook it up and they brought it into a new generation. It's a completely different game. It's evolved. It's bigger. It's grander. It's bolder. There's more freedom to it. It's more open. And that's what I wanted them to do in Star Fox Zero. I wanted them to refresh it and bring it into a more grand scale to be able to explore explore these planets, to have a more open world feeling game, to have more freedom over the flight controls. And that's what Starlink gave me. I love that there's a whole nother set of characters in the game and I do love all of their personalities. I'm really, really enjoying the story and the main story is focused on these characters that we're learning about for the first time. And there's actually points of the game where I kind of wish Star Fox wasn't in the game so I didn't feel compelled to use him because he's so awesome so that I could actually dive into these other characters that I'm really enjoying their personalities and their stories. And I do think that once I finish the game, I will play through again with one or two or three of these characters because I, again, I do love the base game that much. But the fact is, Star Fox is in the game, he is in the entire thing, and I'm not going to play with anyone else for my first playthrough. I'm playing Starlink as a Star Fox game, and it feels like the Star Fox game I've always wanted. And to me, this is Star Fox Battle for Atlantis. And that's just the way I feel. It's my feelings. You can't change my feelings, just like I can't change your feelings. If you like this video or you learned a little something, make sure you hit flip all over that subscribe button. Click or tap on this video right here because that's your final frontier. And with all of that, I'm gonna go continue exploring space. I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs>